to be completely honest with you, I am not a wind-up expert. I did not play the deck when it was really popular back when it first came out, and I did not play it when it had the Shockmaster combo as well. However, when the new wind-up Zen Maintenance card was announced, I got actually really excited because even though I haven't played a lot of wind-ups, I really like the idea of the deck, and that led me to play it on stream a couple times without this card, and uh, I had a lot of fun, but I'm not an expert on this deck, and I mentioned that because in today's video, we're going to take a look at my sort of first draft for Wind Up Nightmares, and uh, I think this deck is super cool, and it also does some crazy combos. The whole point of this deck is that uh, Shark plus Magician gives you six monsters, including a Link 2 monster, and I feel like that has to be broken somehow. There's no way that making six monsters that are different names with the possibility of cards like Wind Up Hunter, there's no way that's not good. Like, there has to be some way to break that, and even though I'm not a perfect player with this deck, I can still make some pretty obscene boards, usually resulting in a Firewall and a Nightmare Griffin, as well as taking out a couple cards from my opponent's hand with Wind Up Hunter. But the reason I'm posting this today is that hopefully someone that's smarter than me that has time to sit down and actually figure out these combos can take this idea and make a better version of the deck and hopefully do well at like a regional with it. I think that'd be super cool. But anyway, let me show you this. And uh, this is kind of something that you can start playing just to sort of get a handle on how to play windups in 2018. And uh, this deck kind of plays like World Chalice, except not as linear. Uh, World Chalice doesn't really have, I mean, it's not, the, the actual like combos aren't linear, but World Chalice pretty much always ends with the exact same board. And uh, it doesn't really, it can't play like a control game. It's kind of like either you win on the first turn or you have no cards, you just have all normal monsters and you can't play the game. Um, this one, just like windups, always have been the advantage of it is that they actually can play a controlling game if it gets to that point or the matchup calls for that uh, also though it can super combo off and make ridiculous ports anyway we were playing three copies of wind up shark kind of obvious this card's crazy um three copies of wind up rat this card's insane um one of the main combos with this deck now is that you can magician for rat and then when you make the wind up link monster um it has an effect on top of, i'll talk about this more in a second but this has an effect that lets you banish a wind up to special summon the same name from your deck um so you can banish the rat that you summon to summon one in attack position pretty good because then you can actually use its effects so those are like the the two main pieces of this deck we are playing three copies of wind up rabbit um this card isn't like as good as it once was but it is a different name and for the nightmare cards you actually need differently named guys so rabbit comes in handy for that and also lets you play that control game if you want to um we are playing two copies of magician because that two card's really stupid in this deck um, and then we're playing one wind-up warrior to summon off of invoker if you need to tribute something for hunter although we are playing thousand blades as well and then uh, i hate i hate that i have to do this but i'm proxying wind-up hunter uh because i've never actually owned a wind-up deck and I, I bought this one from my buddy last night and uh, he didn't have hunter so i'm just making do with what i have but i, I don't have wind-up hunter and that sucks but it's it's super important basically how you're playing this deck uh, a lot of times is you're summoning hunter summoning firewall and then you're tributing monster that firewall points to to take cards out of your opponent's hand and in that way firewall then triggers to special summon guys from your hand so that gives you more tribute fodder for hunter and you can just keep uh, doing crazy stuff but that's like the main wind up sort of engine there i think that's pretty standard kind of what it always is going to be um, we are playing one of the Nightmare Corruptor. Um, this card is just like, it's a one of you don't really want to draw, but it's not terrible to draw. Basically, you just want to summon this with the Mermaid and then add it back to your hand with Firewall and then normal summon it with like a Goblin Extra Normal Summon or a Seraphonite Extra Normal Summon. And then uh, you can bring back a guy and make some big links. I am playing the uh, the Predator Plant engine, so we have three copies of Scorpio and one copy of Cobra. Um, this engine is pretty good. Uh, Brilliant Fusion in particular is really good in this deck, but yeah, this gets to Invoker, which can either summon the Wind Up Warrior or it can summon the Thousand Blades to really start comboing off. Just kind of up to you. Um, we have uh, a lot of Garnets in this deck, unfortunately. So we have one of the actual Garnet. We have one Trick Clown. 1000 blades that's kind of like the preda plant cards that you'll use um this is one thing that i was kind of taking from world chalice uh, we are playing one archlord christia um the way that you can summon this guy it, we can't summon it normally but what you can do is you can send it to the grave with brilliant fusion or you can discard it with any of the nightmares if you happen to uh have it in hand and then you can add it back to your hand with firewall and then special summon it with uh the either the firewall's other effect or you can special summon it with Skull Dread. So that kind of gives you um, a win condition. And what I was finding with windups in general when I played this deck on stream a couple months 
back was that uh, they could they were really good at like flooding the board, but they didn't have anything to make. And I think what's really cool with the nightmares is that they actually give you good cards to end on and give you like a real win condition. Links are just really cool with this deck. So anyway, those are like all the garnets. Which, uh, maybe you can just cut the garnets. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe you don't need to play those cards. I think you'd have to find, um, I don't think there's enough good cards to play in their spots. Uh, at least not for, like, the Brilliant Fusion. But maybe you don't need to play, like, the Cobra Engine or something. I'm not quite sure. Um, just a, st just a starting point. Um, three copies of Ash Blossom and two copies of Ogre. Just pretty standard, uh, going second cards. They're also really good to draw into with the, uh, Skull Dread if you make that card. And then, uh, three copies of Brilliant Fusion, obviously. On um, this card, super dumb. It's just, uh, I thought this card would be terrible with Link Summoning, but as it stands, just with Mystic Radiant, this card actually ends up being really good. So uh, definitely playing the three copies of Brilliant Fusion. Hopefully you can just uh, get some extra normal summons, send some cards to the grave, fill your board, all that kind of stuff. Um, two copies of Wine of Factory. You probably can play three. I don't know what I'd cut for it. Um, I guess you could cut like a trap card or two. Um, well, you wanted to cut two. Just cut a trap card if you want to. Um, I don't really know what I'd cut for it, so I'm just playing the two copies right now. And even as it stands, like, this hasn't really come up too much because, uh, this deck is, like, a combo deck. And if you don't already have a combo, Wine and Factory doesn't really do anything. So, like, if you just have Factory Magician without a Shark, that doesn't really accomplish anything. So, Factory is only really good when you can trigger a Wine of Effect. So, uh, I haven't really noticed it being terrible at two, but certainly play three if you want. And then, uh, one Soul Charge, one Monster Born sort of the Saki one of that if you draw these you'll probably win the game and then for the trap cards for sort of the controlling aspect it's it's only six of them so you have three copies of solemn strike one copy of solemn warning one copy of solemn judgment and then i'm just trying out this uh infinite impertinence and permanence card uh, i don't know how good it is yet so i just wanted to play one copy and see how it works uh you don't necessarily have to play this card it's probably not super important but i just want to see for myself if it's actually worth the price tag how good is this card and it seems like this is a good deck to play it in because uh we don't want to play a ton of trap cards but the ones that we do play want to be really impactful that's it for the main deck it's 40 cards uh, onto the extra deck here one copy of wind up zen main and so why is this card so good well it's two once return effects that are insane the first one lets you add a wind up to your hand when you summon it um the what you're gonna be doing is grabbing shark and then the second fact is that swap out effect so you banish a wind up monster face down and then you special summon the same name from your deck so you banish a rat to get a rat and that rat's in attack mode so then you can use its effect it's pretty crazy bring back magician and then you special on the shark that you just added you do all this crazy stuff so this card's insane um only one though because extra deck space is super tight uh for the nightmares we just play one of all of them so one mermaid one phoenix one cerberus one goblin one unicorn and one of the griffin um these cards are really cool i like them uh, just a lot i think i just as standalone link monsters are cool i think it's interesting that you can just play like a goblin in a deck as sort of a different form of proxy dragon that has the potential to get you a draw and also get you an extra normal summon so that's really cool um griffin's obviously insane for locking on the board i'd say even though i'm not playing this deck perfectly most times i'm ending with like griffin and firewall so that sort of puts my opponent in a weird position i can bounce something with firewall I, they can't do anything because of griffin um so that's like the pretty much the standard opening that i've been finding with this deck although i'm sure there's like crazier stuff if you uh, actually know what you're doing i'm just kind of doing the the big cards and just hoping that's enough um so that's it for the nightmare cards and then uh, we have one underclock taker you can extra link with this deck it's usually kind of tough unless you have monster born and soul charge um, but if you have those cards you very easily can extra link you just have underclock taker on one side and then you have the mermaid on the other side and then you just have a bunch of random stuff to make the u and uh, that's not super difficult it's actually surprising the first deck that i played that uh, can extra link fairly easily um just as long as you have like a revival spell usually when you don't have a revival spell you get like one link monster short so it's worth mentioning though um one copy of mrs radiant just because this is what you make with the predator plant combo we're playing uh topologic trisbania uh, if you have a Trigate Wizard, you definitely should play that instead. I do not own that card, so we're going to be playing this card instead. Uh, and then maybe when Summon Sorceress isn't legal yet, it won't be legal for a couple months, um, but Summon Sorceress will be really good in this deck once we get that. But that's not legal, and I'm trying to, I'm just trying to show you like a deck list if you want to go to your locals and try it out. So this is something that you can play right now, but just keep in mind Summon Sorceress down the road, and uh, probably the Brandish cards too are good. 
For the uh, Link 4s that aren't the Nightmare guys, uh, Boreload, Firewall, and Skull Dread. Uh, mostly you're just making the Firewall and Skull Dread, but sometimes you make the Boreload for like board control because it's that can control the board, which is pretty cool. Even after you do like the huge combo, you still end up with like a ton of gas. Like you just have a bunch of lineups left in deck and hand, which is really cool because uh, unlike World Chalice where you just like you throw you throw your whole hand on the board and you make like a crazy board. If your opponent outs it, then they you kind of lose because you don't have any recovery. But this deck actually has a lot of recovery. Rat's really helpful for that as well, but uh, yeah, those are like the big, uh, the big, the big ring fours or link fours, I should say. And then lastly, we have uh, one invoker and one seraphonite. Uh, I think those are pretty self-explanatory. You can make invoker off of like hunter and rat if you want, uh, but certainly you're just trying to make it with the predator plants most often, and then you can just summon Strathmore with the Brilliant Fusion. Uh, that's it for the deck list, though. Like I said, I think that uh, this is a really good starting point. Um, I, I don't know if the pedal plants are necessary, but they seem good. I mean, they're they're always good in like these sort of combo decks. Uh, you can probably play Trigate instead of the Top of Logic if you have one of those. Um, you don't really need the Infinite Impermanence card if you don't have it. I know it's kind of expensive, but uh, man, I've been having so much fun just sitting here doing test hands with it and playing it on uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Pro as well. Just like you can just go off on your opponent. It's like super crazy what this deck can do. Magician Shark is still an incredibly broken combo and it's uh, super exciting. So hopefully you guys enjoy this sort of introductory deck profile. If you uh, come up with any cool ideas to play in this deck that are like TCG legal, uh, please let us know in the comments. I'm sure all of us would be willing to hear it. I definitely want to learn more about this deck because I've, uh, I've just been having fun playing it. It's cool playing this sort of big combo deck that can also control the board if, it, if you need to. And I think that's really fun. I haven't seen a deck like this since like uh, Phantom Knights, I think. Phantom Knights could make like crazy boards, but also they could sort of slow and slow the game down and just control the board with fog blades. Uh, anyway, though, I will see you guys later. Goodbye.